Morning, folks. Morning, Lewis. Morning, Paul, Marty, Stuart, Debbie, Suzanne, Lorraine, Susie, Colin, Tracy, Margaret, Stuart, Duncan. You know, what's my pot? You know, what's the space? Right. Sorry to broadcast a little bit late this morning, folks. I had a couple other things to do. So, I was a, at the set the broadcast back for 15 minutes this morning. Okay, it's 10.58. I said I'd go live at 11 o'clock. I'll give you a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes to get on a board. And uh, then we'll get started. Okay. Morning, Tommy. Maxwell. Dory. John. Ailey. Tommy, Maxwell, Dory, oh, we've been there. Graham, Colin, good morning, Colin. Morning, Gina. Thomas, Luke. Borada, Luke. Um, morning, Anne, enjoyed your cookery show at the weekend there. Hey, we'll give that a wee go. Didn't it look too complicated? Okay, I'll be sipping my fabled coffee. Good morning, Fiona, Tracy. John, Mags, Robert, morning Jan, how was your trip to the dentist Jan? I hope he didn't put the, the drill through your jaw while he was laughing at me getting off my nut. Morning Nori. <coughs> what a weekend eh? Aye, it was quite good. Um, I've had to tailor doing an awful lot of this on the weekend as you know folks. I tend to pick subjects that I know, the mainstream ones that are there or if I did do the mainstream ones, then I normally have a wee rant about them, okay? Aye, it'd be easy, Anne. That's easy for you and David to say. Eh, used to what you're right around that kitchen like professionals. I've got a wee galley kitchen. Nobody's so easy. Right, 11 o'clock, folks. Let's get this broadcast on the way. There's plenty of you on board. It's nice to see you all again today. So we'll start today as we always do with a coronavirus update. Then we'll move on to the review of the weekend's news. Sarah will keep me right and keep me on time. If I'm not moving fast enough, I dare say I'll get a clip around the lug. She's got things to do the day. All right, so here we go. Coronavirus update. These are the figures for the 8th of the 11th, 2020. Tested in Scotland since the pandemic reached our shores, 1,048,552. Okay, tested positive since the pandemic reached our shores, 73,443. And that's plus 1,115 from Saturday to Sunday. In hospital, 1,245. No change from Saturday to Sunday. In intensive care units, there is 111. And that's plus 6 from Saturday to Sunday. Deaths. This doesn't make it easy reading, folks. Let's say 3,000. And 39, and that's plus 3 for Saturday to Sunday. As we know, the weekend reporting is always a wee bit lower than during the week because the registered the office is shut. Community and hospital deaths combined, 4,649, but we know oh, there's at least another 100 to go in that and reported deaths last week. Okay, we'll get the figures on Wednesday. Right, let's move on to a review of the weekend's news. All right. We'll start on Friday, the 6th of November. Friday started in the UK on Chancellor Rishi Sunak's extending furlough until March 2021. And, of course, Trump and the US election. OK. Sunak extended the furlough, a, a further down the line, to stave off huge problems with the English public and from pressure from the devolved administrations. Northern Ireland wheels in Scotland are becoming a um, Northern Ireland, Scotland, the wheels are starting to get more and more dissatisfied with the behaviour of the Westminster government. The Westminster government is acting as an English government. But as we know, 
the Tories have stopped being unionists and they are now exclusively uh, the English National pa Nationalist Party. All right. Now, obviously, people are becoming more and more disillusioned, and this is driving support for independence in Scotland, Wales, and reunification in Northern Ireland. You see, the Tory party has stopped being a unionist party, and it has become the English Nationalist Party, and it's no interested in the devolved administrations except for asset stripping. All right. Right, and on the Trump side, in the American election on Friday, Trump's uh, threatening to challenge the outcome of the election in the courts, claiming that postal votes were no legal. All right. Now, what Trump's saying is they were counting postal votes that that weren't they, uh, which were postmarked after the third of November. There's no evidence to this, but Trump's claiming it. Trump's hanging on to power by his fingernails, and he's beginning to look more and more like a clown. The major US um, associate press networks have turned their back on Trump, so he's no voice, and it looks like Twitter's about to <laughs> Twitter's about to shut him up and all. Okay, so the Americans are becoming embarrassed with Trump's behaviour, and as he attempts to stay in power, and that's becoming quite clear on Friday. All right. Friday, Scottish Tories to insist Pozo the Clown stay clear of next year's Holyrood election. As far as the Tories are up here in Scotland are concerned, Pozo and Brexit are driving the support for Scottish independence up. And they want Bojo to stay well out the road in the Scottish re election next year. A wee bit more of that on Saturday, OK? Friday. A story reported a, on I News on Wednesday became mainstream. Now, the report on the I, a, I News website states that a £45 million contract to supply 5 million medical a, grade 3M FFP3 respirator masks to NHS England or Public Health England is subject to a fraud investigation in the American courts. Um, Right. The Department of Health and Social Care in England said the deal was part of a £270 million contract with its supplier, Purple Surgical, from Hertfordshire. Right. Purple Surgical in Hertfordshire had outsourced the finding of these masks to a third party. Right. Now, the third party was... Um, one billion's investment uh, management in the British Virgin Isles. Okay. Now they have received the money and haven't supplied any masks. Now the reason why this is being lodged in the American courts is because it's a method of stealing. Purple surgery outsourced paying a uh, one billion's investment group to a, law, a, a lawyer's company in California. So the money went for Purple Investment, uh, sorry, Purple Surgery, who was paid up front by the UK government, out to California. That was after Purple Surgery took a slice off the tap to the tune of, wait, wait for it, wait for it, 24 million quid. So they sent 21 million quid or 27 million dollars to an American legal uh, law firm to pay uh, bill, uh, win billions investment group in the British Virgin Isles. Nothing has come back. Now, the American law firm has lodged papers in the Californian courts. One billions investment group for British Virgin Isles, a tax haven, is contesting it. It's saying that the legal case can't be brought in California because the law firm in California is just the middleman. Right? So, this looks like how they're getting away with stealing our money. Our money. Right? They're sending it to third parties to then get it into the tax havens. The third party being nothing more than the middleman can't really bring the lawsuits 
in the courts. It needs to be the source company. And a purple surgical haven't lodged any papers in the UK as far as any of us can tell. So that's how they're going about stealing our money, folks. They're outsourcing instead of doing what they're being paid to do, and that's provide PPE by themselves. Okay, moving on. Friday, once again, SMP stalwarts call for a plan B after Arsenal Union Jack states there will be no second independence referendum for 20 to 40, 25 to 40 years. This was doubled down on by a Westminster spokesperson who stated the matter of Scottish independence was settled in 2014. Right, the impression was given by the Westminster spokesperson that that was it. There wouldn't be another Scottish independence referendum ever. What they're saying is, Scots are not allowed to change their bloody minds. You know, you can have an election every five years to change the party you want to run your country, your country, your devolved administration, or Westminster. But you can't have a second say on whether you want to stay part of the union or no. All right, Pete, Pete Wishart says, not going to happen. They'll buckle under pressure when the SNP win next year's election. Well, there's two problems there. Will the SNP, will there be an election next year? We know that Holyrood's going to run out of money in April because there's no budget being set and uh, the Scottish Parliament has no idea how much money he's going to get. And the other side to that is Westminster have been repeatedly saying no. They've moved to saying no, not now. They have now moved to saying no. It's settled. You don't get the bloody well ask the question again. Now we know that under international treaty, the Good Friday Agreement, that these questions um, under international law can only be asked once every seven years. Now because Scotland, England, Northern, uh, Northern Ireland and Wales are all signatory to that, as well as Europe and the USA, then of course the question was asked six years ago in Scotland, so we should be alright to ask it again next year. We have been told no. Could that be the reason for wanting to break the Good Friday Agreement and the Internal Market Bill? Because we know that Scotland's far more valuable to Westminster than Northern Ireland. Right, so apparently, that's it, Jock. Get back in your bloody box. You've had your say. You've not have any mercy. This is a, you know, Alistair Jack said they were going to use mere muscular unionism. We didn't quite know what that meant. We still don't know what that means. Are they going to try and pull a Northern Ireland stunt here? Where they set the people against each other in violent conflict? Is that their idea of muscular unionism? Well, Nene is no. What we do know is that they are, they are intending to deny democracy and they're intending to say that Scottish democracy is second class and Disney couldn't. The will of the Scottish people don't count. All right, moving on. Friday, the American Associate Press called the U.S. election for Joe Biden. Now let me make this clear: it was the American Associate Association Associate Press that called it for Biden. The Electoral College hasn't called it for Biden, but they've got to wait legally until all the votes are counted. And of course, as we know, Trump in one state's been trying to get the count stopped. Well, in another state, has been trying to get the country to carry on. Where it had been stoked. Not been stoked to a night right now, but he wanted to carry it on, right? Anyway, it would appear that the American press are turning their back on a, um, Trump. No wonder. His behaviour has been outrageous. Right, eh, uh, where are we? Right, now, doing that road in Westminster, they refused to acknowledge, on Friday they refused to acknowledge the fact that the US election has been called. Well, they were entitled to, the Electoral Commission had not and it would appear that ministers in uh, Westminster were still hoping that somehow uh, Trump was going to be able to wangle his way to win in that election. Alright, now reports in the UK are suggesting that Bojo and his criminal cabal in 
Westminster are now about to turn their attentions back to the EU negotiations because they don't fancy their chances we Biden, all right. Friday, former a British Home Stores owner, Dominic Chapel, got sentenced to six years in jail at Southwark a Crown Court for tax evasion. He was found guilty of failing to pay tax on a pay tax of five hundred and eighty four thousand on two thousand two sorry two point two million of income he recorded after buying the field chain from Sir Philip Green for a pound. Alright. And summing up the judge said Chapel had been engaged in a long and consistent course of conduct designed to cheat the inland revenue. So basically the judge says you've been at this for a long time and you've been trying to cheat the public purse. Alright. Um, Simon York Director of HMRC's a fraud investigation said this was a deliberate theft from the UK citizens. But for some reason, I can't get this out of my head. I'll find it. But I think this guy was a patsy to get Sir Philip Green off the hook on the pensions fraud. Because nobody's looked into Sir Philip Green and the bloody pension fraud stroke theft from British Home Stores pensions. That also left the taxpayers with a bloody big bill to plug the back hole in a British Home Store's pensions. So for some reason, this story doesn't sit right with me, folks. I'll get to the bottom there. Right, Friday. SNP released lists of candidates for next year's Holyrood election. Full list is available on the SNP website. Now remember, folks, it doesn't matter if it wasn't your preferred candidate. If we don't give the SNP a majority next year in Holyrood elections, then independence is off the cards for 25 to 40 years. Alright? So, hold your nose if you don't like the candidate, vote them in, and then give them bloody hell in their constituency offices to ensure they do what you want them to do. That's how we deal with these people. Alright? Now let's move on to Saturday. Saturday was a bloody busy day. Right. Saturday, the London Economics uh, .com reports that half a billion pounds worth of PPE contracts had been handed to Tory donors. Right. So far, £526 million pounds worth of contracts have been handed to Tory donors uh, to manufacture PPE. Without proper a, without any proper due diligence or without any proper a tendering process, okay. The paper claims that an elite group of Tories, um, known as the Leaders Group, who are massive donors to the Tory Party, have been given preferential treatment and uh, attaining these contracts, okay. Now, the London Economic Disney hold back. It says it's corruption on a massive scale. They are also saying it's death for the public, public bus because we can all see how these uh, things are gone. Anyway, Johan Mohan, uh, Mohan of uh, the Good Law Project um, states that uh, they intend to take every one of these bloody contracts through the courts. Alright. So, massive theft on a massive scale and it's gone straight into the pockets of the Tories. No doubt that these Tory donors are making a skinning, but they're probably backhanding the MPs and the cabinet and all. But it's on tax havens, so we won't know. Saturday, UK bans Denmark um, visitors over a mink COVID-19 fear. People are still farming these creatures for their fur. And they're having a laugh. Is that what a... Uh, UK tourists are doing when they go to Denmark and we're visiting mink farms to see these poor wee fluffy creatures getting bloody skin to make gloves, hats, whatever it is they make out of mink after all, they're only tiny wee bloody things. And with all the alternatives that we have in the 21st century, are we still inflicting misery on these creatures? Are we still animal farming these bloody creatures? Anyway, apparently um, COVID-19's cross species into these creatures. 
Let's hope none of them get out into the wild and infect the wild man. I, I have to say, people, I'm gobsmacked. I'm gobsmacked that we're still slaughtering animals for the fur. Slaughter them, eat them, fair dues, but for the fur. You know what I mean? I can't believe that. Anyway, apparently Denmark's off the bridge list. Right? You can't travel to Denmark and they can't travel here. Saturday, disability news reports that Minister for the 18th century, Jacob Rees Mogg, has accused shielding MPs of shirking their duties by working from home. You get that? So Mogg wants shielding MPs to put their family and friends in danger by travelling to Westminster and into the city of London where we know the infection rate is bloody massive because if the infection rate in London had been bloody massive, there would be no extension to the bloody furlough scheme. Right. What was funny about that was, there's Moggy telling people, a uh, disabled and a uh, shield named piece of disabled family members to get their behookies to work. While his own government, the day before and the day before that, were telling people, stay in the bloody house. What is it with Moggy? Does he only pop into the 21st century every now and again? Does he miss the bloody news? Can't he believe him? Anyway, it appears that Jacob Rees We know that Jacob Rees Mogg and the Tories don't value life at all. Unless you're a member of the elite set. Okay. So he wants shielding MPs in to put themselves and their families in danger. Couldn't you believe it. Hey. Saturday, the smacking ban comes into effect in Scotland making Scotland the first country on these islands to make it illegal to smack your kids. I'm not going to get into much more than that. That's all I'm going to say on that because there's a raging debate about this. Um, there's people with me that say, well, I got my hair, my, my hair's tan now and again, didn't do me any harm. And there's the other side of the argument that says that he, that he scars children for life. Okay, so I'm not going to go any further on that except for to say the smacking ban is now in place. It uh, will be classed as assault if you smack your children. Saturday, the Dalry Del a bypass in Ayrshire is officially opened. It comes in seven months early and on budget. Let's see what the unionists make of that one. Right? I think I've seen something on Saturday in some, some Mad Unes timeline saying, mere pollution. <laughs> well, you know what? There's mere pollution when motors are still on the still. At least if they're moving, they're spreading it thin. Right, Saturday. Right, analysis of the latest uh, polls on Hollywood voting intentions um, shows that since a car crash, Jackson Carlow was ousted from office by Dross Douglas Ross and his team uh, of backstabbers, including me, Ruthie, tank commander in the pool, the Tory party has slipped 7% in the polls. Right. Dross has had a massive impact on the Tories here in Scotland. Since Dross became the leader of the Scottish Tories, they have dropped back 7% in the polls. They went for 26% in the polls under car crash, didn't they? 19% on the polls under Dross. Ah, Dross is really doing well, isn't he? <laughs> ah, you got to love Dross. Ah, imagine that. Even Richard Who, the bouncy boy, is rating higher on the polls now than Dross. As he, it appears that Dross, as he took the poll, Tories back to third place in Scotland. What was more interesting about that poll, folks, was that the Lib Dems have slipped off the map here in Scotland. Off the map altogether. They are polling at 1.68%. They're not going to win nothing. We worry who. The man who um, has to get his wife to put his shoes on in the morning and get him into a driven car to get to Holyrood. Well, it appears to be Willie as he really taking the tanking in the polls. And I dare say the FM's got a lot to do with that, especially when she stood up in Parliament a couple of weeks uh, a couple of weeks ago and said he was an intelligent man. The whole of Scotland fell with a bloody laughing. <laughs> but to be fair to me, Willie, apparently he's a a good constituency MSP 
But it looks as if he's not going to be a constituency MSP much longer. Because <laughs> the Lib Dems are falling straight off the bloody map. Anyway, the point is that he, since he, since Dross T and Hour, um, you know, the Tories are taking a hiding in the polls. And he, of course, as I say, we will be any and his Lib Dems have fallen out of the, the, the contention altogether. Good news is the Greens are sitting at 9% in the polls in Scotland. That's where, that's, that's where the Lib Dems work. You know? <laughs> hey, Dross even gives Richard Hoo a spring in the step. Aye, nice one, Luke. <laughs> Saturday, the Financial Times reports water to become more valuable than oil in the future. Well, we know that, right? Suez, a French utility company um, uh, CEO, Jean uh, Louis Chaucer, said water supply will be a major um, problem for industry in the near future. Suez, who recently bought General Electric's water division for $3.4 billion, states water supplies would be the biggest uh, issue for industries such as chemicals, drugs, mining, and energy in the future. Right. Now, this would be a great thing for an independent Scotland because we have got a lot of water. And if a global warming um, predictions are right, Scotland's about to get bloody well wetter in the future. Right. And we know this to be true. Um, now, it's another reason why Westminster wants to hold on to it so badly. I've reported this stuff before. Um, UK Water wants access to Scotland's 31,000 freshwater lochs in order to supply water into England and to sell it into England. And the Internal Market Bill makes it possible for Westminster to break up and sell off Scottish Water, which is a public-owned utility which supplies us all the water. So basically the Internal Market Bill allows Westminster to steal our water resources the same way they stole the bloody oil. This is another resource which, if we don't become independent, will be bled dry from Scotland and the Scottish people will see no advantages of it. The Internal Market Bill will see manometers in your house and you'll pay for water the same way you pay for electricity and gas, the way they do in England and Wales. I'm not sure of the situation in Northern Ireland Fiona, if you could let me know what the script is in Northern Ireland in the comments, please. Right. So that was a big story. According to the Financial Times, water is going to become more valuable than oil. And Scotland has got more water than most of bloody Europe, actually. There's more water in Loch Ness than what there is in the rest of these islands put together. Right, Saturday. Hey, Bojo. Um, states that he wants to get back into proper negotiations with the EU. And a change of rent seat since Friday. Hey. And the call in the US elections. Bojo the Clown says there is a deal to be done with the EU. Now I said last week that Bojo was holding out to find out what the result of this election is. Now he knows what the result of this election is. He needs to get tore in about um, getting something sorted with the EU. He has to be able to offer the UK public something. Because at this point in time, we are facing a double disaster. And as I've already stated, that's the reason why Sunak has extended this furlough to next March. Because they're trying to stave off civil unrest on that bloody road. Because when Brexit hits, wow. Okay. Saturday Independent Reports. Um... Aye, that the Japan deal was a duffer. The much heralded Japan deal by Liz Truss, the International Trade Secretary, turns out to be nothing. Out of the 9,444 items listed in the trade tariff section of that deal, tariffs only reduce on 10 of them. And guess what, folks? We don't export bloody any of them. We don't export hides. And we don't export bird eggs. And the Japanese don't like dairy. Most of them are dairy uh, um, lactose intolerant. You know, so out of 
four uh, nine thousand four hundred and forty-four uh, items which are uh, subject to tariffs. Only ten of them are exempt or had low tariffs put in, put on them. And out of that ten, we actually export bloody none of them to Japan. So Liz Truss is being accused of uh, misleading the UK public, and she's being accused of misleading the Westminster Parliament. Now the, the, the analysis was done by UKTPO, which is a, a body that, ma that monitors trade deals that the UK does, and uh, that makes it quite clear. The negotiations with Japan, all they did was take us back to where we were as a member of the EU. So no advantages at all to um, being independent of the EU and no advantages in the trade deal that was heralded by Liz Truss as being a master stroke for the UK. All right, so she is being accused of misleading the parliament and the people. Right, let's move on to Sunday because this broadcast is moving on. Moving on to Sunday the 8th of November. Sunday Mason the news was about the US election, all right? Sunday morning, um, Unionist press and supporters in Scotland are going after bloody nut because the USA Associate Press, when uh, given statements about the election result um, from the uh, world leaders, they quoted Nicola Sturgeon and no Bojo the Clown. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so the unionists are no chuffed at Nicky being um, put up on a pedestal by the Americans as a world leader. Anyway, as we all know, it was actually a shot across the bows of Westminster as well as a message to, the, to, to Trump. Uh, basically what she said was that hey, if you go up against democracy, you bloody well lose. And that's a message to Bojo. If they win an election next year with the landslide is expected, you go up against the democracy and you're going to bloody well lose. So anyway, unionists in Scotland, the unionist press in Scotland were no chuff that the First Minister was quoted as a world leader. Now if we had a free press in Scotland, of course they would be bragging that the First Minister, stroke Prime Minister of such a small nation, was being quoted as a world leader. But no, 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 you're in the UK. You're in the UK. If you're an evolved First Minister, you're nothing. You're not supposed to be able to speak to the international press. You know, and the international press is not supposed to bloody well listen to you. <laughs> yeah, so that was funny. Right, Saturday, the Independent reports that the... That's... Sorry, I'm on Sunday, folks. What's the plot there? Sunday morning. That's a Nicky story. Better move out a page. Do apologise for that. Sunday, PM Johnson was asked about the, the result of the US election. Bojo states there was more a um, more unites the UK and the US than divides us, right? Asked about a, um, Bojo's stance on putting every ballot in an election, Bojo then states he didn't want to get involved in another country's election, right? The Bojo wasn't asked about another country's election. Dominic Rao was uh, slaughtered the same way later on Sky. But anyway, Bojo wasn't asked about another country's election. He was just asked if he believed that all votes or all ballots in an election should be, could be count, should be counted. But Bojo wouldn't answer that question. A, he's still hoping that somehow Trump A manages to get the result overturned in the UK and US courts. And of course, we already know that the Tories have been trying to gerrymander um, democracy here in Scotland for the last 10 years, years, pardon me, we had to uh, carry on about one to rejig the constituencies in favour of Tories, and then we had to uh, move to try and stop the poorest people in society from voting by wanting to introduce IDs such as passport or driving licence, which the poorest don't have, because they want picture ID, and then of course we had the, the attempt to strike Everybody who's unemployed after the electoral register with them stating that they don't contribute to the country so they shouldn't have a say in the country's future. So, you know, of course Johnson's no going to stand up and say I believe all, vo all votes should be counted because he doesn't believe everybody should be allowed to bloody well vote. 
In fact, that lot, including the Minister for the 18th century, I believe only landowners should be able to vote. Taking us back to the 18th bloody century. Tories don't believe in democracy at all. They're elitists. So anyway, Sunday was quite funny when it came to the Tories. They were getting a walloping over their lack of belief in democracy and their inability to answer a simple a question on democracy. Do you believe all votes should be counted in an election? Apparently the Tories don't, folks. That doesn't bode well for next year's Scottish election. Ha 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 ha! and the dragon is laughing in the background. Right. In other news on Sunday, senior UK ministers are investigated about the lockdown leak. Okay. Apparently last week before the, uh, sorry, a couple of weeks ago before the announcement that a uh, the UK, England was to go into full lockdown, somebody leaked it to the press the day before Bojo made his announcement, right? So there's an investigation in here. Apparently took the phones away and they are investigating ministers' um, official email sites. Now, I don't know why they're bothered. Whoever it was that leaked that information would have battled down the road to a pal's house and would have used somebody else's email address to send that out. Or they would have met a reporter, somebody they trust for the press pack, privately, unseen, and given the information word the mouth. But you know what, they're going through the process, nothing will come of it, but I suppose through parliamentary process it's going to be done. Sunday, UK government do another U-turn with the announcement that of £400 million to help feed poor kids in England. Partly Marcus Rashford, the footballer, is delighted. So am I. Because if they're going to spend that in England, that's another forty million coming up the bloody road. No, no, no. Hold on. I forty million coming up the road to help feed poor kids in Scotland. Or to be spent anywhere else that the Scottish government choose. Alright. Because there will be consequentials for that. But I'm mere delighted that kids doing that road are going to get bloody well fed. The Tories nearly killed themselves and put themselves out of business on a minuscule amount of money when they're backhanding mere that to their pals and PPE contracts. I've just said 528 million backhanders to their pals and they couldn't feed kids. Now, this 400 million is a very generous package because it was stated they only needed 20 million to continue the voucher. Um, scheme. So no doubt somewhere along that line, 380 million quid will disappear into Tory pockets. Right, Sunday, back here in Scotland, it's reported that the speed of the COVID-19 pandemic is slowing down. Um, Professor Linda Bald of Public Health, um, Edinburgh University, I think it is, as a Glasgow, that one. Anyway, she says the measures being taken so far here in Scotland is starting to see a slowdown and the transmission rate. I have to say, looking at the figures, I don't really see it. We're still hovering in, you know, between 100, a, 100 a, 1,400 new cases a day and 1,000 new cases a day. I think the lowest it was last week was 999 new cases in one day. So, I don't see it. I don't see it myself. But apparently, according to Linda Bold, Professor Linda Bold, things are starting to level out here in Scotland. Well, I suppose this week will tell. And on Tuesday this week we'll find out, tomorrow we'll find out whether, in the review of measures so far, we'll find out, I think I better trim my beard, anyway we'll find, <laughs> we said earlier, anyway we'll find out on Tuesday whether Scotland's going to follow England into a full lockdown, all right, or some areas of Scotland. Aye, Sunday mayor, bad news for a, um, the Tory government, report on Friday, Substantiated on Saturday, reported again on Sunday, says that Goldman Sachs is moving 60 billion quid for London to Germany. Alright, money is fleeing London at a rapid rate of knots, and London. Professor Tim Spector is also saying that the, the numbers are leveling out, are they? Jim, well, we'll see. You see, I take a daily note of these figures, we'll see. Anyway. Apparently Goldman Sachs is moving 80 billion quid in investments from uh, London to Germany as the 
financial institutes in London flee. They are heading off and they're taking the money at an operating arts. Thankfully, a lot of them are coming to Scotland, so they must know something that we don't know. Okay, right. So London will very shortly, shortly no longer be the world's biggest financial centre. All right. Right, Sunday speculation on the effects of a Biden presidency on a post-Brexit UK trade deal was rife, okay. Now Biden has, Biden has previously stated that the UK is doing the line and that if they continue with the internal market bill and the, the intent to end the breach of international law and the breach of the Good Friday Agreement, then a trade deal, if it comes about, will be minimal. But if they break a Good Friday Agreement, there's more likely to be trade sanctions. Okay. Um, also Sunday, the question of Biden's uh, position on Scotland's, uh, Scotland independence um, was asked quite repeatedly. Now, I have to correct myself there. I conflicted two reports. Right? Now, I stated uh, in, a, in my short 10-minute vlog yesterday that Biden had said that he... Um, he learnt from Scottish friends not to tell a Scotsman what he did, and that he, he respected democracy and the will of the Scottish people should be adhered to, right? I conflicted two reports there. The first part, that Biden had learnt from Scottish friends not to tell a Scotsman what he did, came from Biden's mouth. The second part was part of a summation in an interview with the National, with Professor Mark Blythe, who earlier this year came out. For Scottish independence, he's an economist, a world famous economist, working in America, he's paid on D. Right? And when he was asked by the National about Biden's view on Scottish independence, it was him that said that Biden's a Democrat, and it was him that said that all the Scottish people should be um, respected. Alright? So, when I make a mistake, folks, I like to correct it, and I want to thank the viewers for pointing that out yesterday. Alright? So anyway, let's get back to the point. Trade deal with Biden, out the windy, if they carry on with the internal market bill the way it is, and if they intend to break international law and they intend to bugger the Good Friday Agreement, because Biden has already stated, and this I do know to be true, he's Irish. And he puts Ireland in front of England or UK, if you like. So if they break the Good Friday Agreement, There'll be no deal and there'll be bloody sanctions. So Westminster's got a big problem there. Right, moving on to this morning and what the papers have to say because time's moving on. Right, the Scotsman goes on. Biden to heal a uh, wounds of division left by Trump. The record goes on four more years. Now the four is spelled F-O-R-E as in for golf. Four. Right. And he... Uh, but the record they're claiming is that uh, on Saturday, Trump was on the golf course and his son-in-law, can't even mind what his name is, uh, uh, Jarrett, something, uh, anyway, he told Trump that he had to um, give up the fight and concede graciously. All right, according to the record, the Tory graph goes on, Trump as well. Um, Trump may uh, to go quietly. Claims that uh, uh, Trump must go quietly, claims the Telegraph. The eye goes on, hello Mr. President, and it's got a picture of Biden on the front page. The Express goes on, Biden will do trade deal with UK. Don't know about the nut job paper got its information for But the Express has asserted that Biden will do trade with the UK. What? 65 million in a market. Versus 444 million in the market next door. I don't see Biden in any rush to do a trade deal with the UK. Part of that was reported on Sunday that him and the, his running mate Kamala Harris don't like Bojo. They just don't like him. So Bojo will be off shortly, folks. Jared Kutzner, thank you very much, Fiona. Now, Fiona, I've never seen any, any remark about what What's the story with water earlier in Northern Ireland? They usually get the same system as we have in Scotland. Or have you got a manometer like that lot down the road in England and Wales? Right, where were we? The Herald goes on. 
he revealed the rising death rate among poorest in society. This is a COVID story, and it's an obvious story, right? Poorer people are less well uh, nourished. They have less money to spend on um, things like recreation, so they're not as fat, and their health is not as good. So the fact that COVID's wiping out more poor, poor people than is wiping out uh, uh, wealthier people, that's not a surprise, folks. But it's worth being highlighted by the Herald, so I'd like to say the Herald, you know, they did the right thing highlighting it. The sun goes on. Harry's band wreath. Now, apparently, nobody in the royal family were willing to lay, uh, lay a wreath at the Cenotaph in London yesterday for, for Prince Harry. All right, who cares? Now, you might have noticed on my timeline yesterday, I didn't make anything of Armistead's Day or Remembrance Sunday. That's because it's a private matter for me, all right? People want to display all this stuff and show their patriotism or whatever it is. You know, generally, that's up to them. Me, how we celebrate war dead, that's a private matter to me. Right, the National goes on. Exclusive. Tories on brink of civil war over Scotland and Scots back 2021 a referendum. Yes, two referendum. Two stories there. Apparently, Scottish Tories and Westminster Tories are about to go to war over how Scotland has been treated. And apparently, a poll has shown the majority of people in Scotland believe that if there's a landslide slide for the SNP next year in the whole election, then there should be a second independence referendum, okay. Right, uh, the mail goes on. BBC crisis over Diana Vile Flander. I've got bloody no idea about that. I don't follow the royal family. I'm not interested in them. None. They have no bearing in my life. They have very little bearing on anybody's life in Scotland. And 95% of the people in Scotland ignore them. Totally bloody well ignore them. Right, the mail goes, where were we? Uh, the Times goes on, GCHQ in cyber war on vaccine propaganda. Apparently, anti-vaxxers are putting out lots and lots of uh, information on social media and GCHQ is spending their time trying to stop it. I don't believe a bloody word for that. I wonder that. Not a thing. No, I wonder that. Well, especially here in Scotland, where we're bloody well intelligent people. We'll make up our own minds on vaccines and medicines and any other subject. Right? And the star goes on. Wait for it. The star goes on. The star has won! Yay! I had no idea what that was about. But uh, when I read the wee head of it at the bottom of the page, apparently the star has won its uh, campaign to get next week's Scotland match on Thursday uh -huh. aired free to view by Murdoch. So apparently Sky Sports, who have the contract for this game, are going to put it out free to view. All right. Wow. <laughs> so there we go. Football fans in Scotland will be well chuffed, and it means I'll be ignoring the game as usual. No, I'll be listening to it on the tranny, because I don't watch a telly. All right. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Oh, ask Rory. Aye, nice one. It's nice to see the way you guys are all interacting in there. Hey, I, Jan, I seen your report on a, um, you know, your concern about the free port under a UK government special enterprise up in the. Up there in the Cromity. Um I did see it, I did read it, I shared your concerns. Free ports, folks, are not a good idea. It's a smuggler's paradise and it gives nothing. For those who missed my your water comments, and then I and then I it's paid for via rates, right? The same as us then, Fiona, thanks. Um eh, I'm very concerned about this as well, eh, Jan. Really concerned about this idea that Scottish ports are applying for free port status. I'm even more concerned that an SNP councillor is backing the bloody idea. 
a turn in the place up there into a bloody smuggler's paradise. Because free ports, goods coming in, don't pay tariffs, don't pay tax, and make no contribution whatsoever to the UK economy other than the people they employ. And that's bloody minuscule. Right, folks, as the dragon says, we've got other things to do today. I have to get on. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you found it informative. And I hope you found it entertaining. And we're 193 years watching it live. I'm gay chuffed. <laughs> so usual stuff. Doesn't matter if you believe in this vaccine or no. Facts. Face coverings and enclosed public spaces. Avoid large gatherings. Clean hands and surfaces regularly. Two metres social distancing when you're out and about. If you need a test, book one, but don't expect a bloody result, because apparently a lighthouse labs are in bloody meltdown. If you need one, go to an NHS hospital. All right. Now, <laughs> use a lot, have a nice day, and we'll speak to you tomorrow. That's how we get the week underway. Have a nice day. Sarah? Amen.